Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my October wrap up and I have a couple of explanations first. Uh, so I had originally wanted to film and get this video out earlier but I got COVID so if you can hear my voice it sounds like I still have COVID but I'm feeling much better and my face is red <laughs> because I just had a drink at work like after work drinks so that's why my face is red and if I seem like I just had a drink I did and it's dark out so that's why the lighting sucks so lots of explanations for why this video is a mess already oh I forgot I need to get my stats for this <laughs> I'll be right back. Uh, when I said I'd be back in a second, I didn't mean two weeks later with a haircut, not being sick or tipsy anymore, but there's something going on with my phone where it will just stop recording. Uh, I'm like literally recording this for the second time today because it stopped recording the first time. Uh, so this is that, that's what happened when I tried recording this originally. I lost maybe three minutes of footage, so I'll go back to me from the past after this section, but I did want to talk about my stats for my reading month. I read a total of eight books, which was 200, sorry, 2,672 pages, making my average book, book length to be 334 pages per book. Everything that I read was adult fantasy, and as for the uh, format breakdown. I read four books physically, two books on audio, one book on ebook, and one book as a mix between ebook and audiobook. For the star breakdown, I had four three star books, one four star book, and three five star books. And three of the books that I read this month were translated. So I think that was all the stats that I had, and I did just want to lead into what I ended up talking about uh, when my video came back on. Uh, I was talking about the books that I have DNF'd in October. The first one being the... Dang it, I can't even remember the name of the book. The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten, which is the first book in a trilogy, I believe. I don't think I talked about what this book was about, but I didn't like it, so I DNF'd it. So yeah back to past me it just didn't feel like what i was expecting so i dnf'd it probably 30 pages in it just wasn't what i wanted and especially right now i'm feeling like i just don't have time for books that i am not feeling like if i don't think anything i'm reading after what i've already read could improve my thoughts on a book it's time to let it go, which is definitely true for the next book that I DNF'd, which is The Bone Shard War by Andrea Stewart, which is the final book in the Drowning Empire trilogy. I got about 250 pages into that book, and I was like, is there anything in the next 350 pages that could make like reading that much worth it? And my answer was no. So I was like, then why am I going to keep reading it? I'm not. So I DNF'd it. I really enjoyed the first book in the series and like that was such a good book and then the second one kind of just changed tone and wasn't really something that I was enjoying anymore so I was hoping that the third one would kind of bring it all together and in what I read from it it did not. It's kind of funny because one of the books that I loved this month is kind of like a plotless book which is something that I usually really enjoy and The Bone Shard War kind of felt like a plotless book, but it felt like pointless plotless, whereas the other book I read didn't feel pointless. I don't know, it just felt like nothing was moving forward. The plot obviously wasn't moving forward, but neither were the characters or any of the relationships or the themes or anything. It just felt like nothing had happened in those first 250 pages, so goodbye. <laughs> Unfortunately, it sucks to DNF a series halfway through the third book. Like, it sucks, but it sucks even more to waste your time reading something that you're not enjoying. Anyway, moving on to what I did actually finish this month, uh, starting with the lowest rated book up to my highest rated book. So starting off is actually one that I read on ebook. I got it from Hoopla. 
I my library recently got Hoopla so I've been kind of exploring their options there and they had some manga so I picked up one called Platinum Blood and this was a vampire story definitely mature <laughs> I was reading it at work and I was like oh my god thank god I'm in like my back is to a corner so no one can see what I'm reading on my phone right now um it is a BL but there were some themes in it that I thought were not great uh it's basically about this guy who's a priest and he has this guy who's a vampire that he was his ward as a child and now they're in a relationship and that's pretty much the reason why I didn't like it as much as I could have I think is because that relationship just seemed very roomy uh so there was that uh otherwise I thought it was like fine there was nothing like great about it but nothing like terrible so it was what it was next up also, I don't think I said that was a three star book. So my next three star book is Secret Project Number Four by Brandon Sanderson. I'm gonna show it if you don't wanna see it, but I think everyone's gotten it at this point. That would be The Sunlit Man. And while I love this edition, I think it's really cool. Um, this book was not what I was hoping for, I guess. Um, I talked about this a little bit in the reading vlog that I did and it just felt like something that we didn't need yet and that just didn't make sense for us to read at this point in the Cosmere and I'm not gonna say more about that just because like it is so heavily Cosmere influenced that like even saying like anything about it could spoil other Cosmere books like all that you know I talked about it a little bit more in my vlog and I also filmed a video on Elle's channel where a bunch of us talked about this book with spoilers. I'm not sure if that's up yet or not but I don't even know why this video is going up. I'll have it linked or just go follow Elle and see when she posts it. <laughs> um, but yeah the secret projects for me kind of ended on a like kind of fizzled out. Uh, yeah unfortunate next up another three star was the fellowship of the ring nope it's the two towers <laughs> oh yeah i really enjoyed the fellowship of the ring but i gave ended up giving the two towers three stars this one just felt okay first of all a lot of people have opinions about tom bombadil in the fellowship of the ring and i did as well um i did not like that chapter and I found a chapter in this book that I think is the worst chapter I've ever read. Like, oh my god, it's the tree beard chapter. That chapter, I remember texting one of my friends like, what is this chapter? Uh, let me look. Okay, it's actually not even a long chapter. <laughs> it felt like a long time. I listened to this book, so it felt like way longer. Oh my god. It was only 27 pages. I swear to god I was listening to that chapter for like three hours. It just felt so long. So I feel like nothing in Lord of the Rings can be a spoiler at this point but if you really don't want to hear anything about it, go away. <laughs> um, uh, I mean Treebeard is talking to Merry and Pippin and he's just talking to them. Like talking at them. He, they're not having a conversation. It's just Treebeard talking about a bunch of stuff at Merry and Pippin. Like Merry and Pippin probably talk twice in that chapter and I was like oh my god like I don't need to keep hearing about all this stuff so I found that really frustrating and yeah I think just overall uh there were some I, don't, I feel unfair to say pacing issues because I am so used to watching the movies that like of course I'm gonna compare it to the book once I read the book um but it just felt like there were certain things that I thought went on way too long like the tree beard scene and other things that could have gone on much longer. So there were certain scenes like that and also having half of the book be basically the two halves of the book being completely separate stories. I don't know how I feel about that but yeah I ended up giving it three stars. Definitely going to continue on to the return of the king though but that one was not my favorite. 
Speaking of another book that wasn't my favorite, <laughs> um, I finally, well not finally, I read 10,000 Stitches by Olivia Atwater. This is the second Regency Fairy Tales book and I really, really, really enjoyed the first one. Um, Half a Soul, which I think I read in September or August. Um, so I really enjoyed that and I was really looking forward to this one. And this one unfortunately wasn't as good uh, for me. This one follows, <laughs> I was gonna say I haven't talked about what anything is about so far, but one of them needs no introduction and the other one is literally a secret. So that makes sense. Um, okay, this one is about a maid who wants to, like, think she's in love with the heir to the house or whatever. What, what's his name? A duke? What is he? A lord? I don't know what his title is. She fell in love with this guy who's obviously a different class than her. This fairy comes to help her marry this guy. Um, and, like, things ensue. And, like, I guess because I pictured the fairy whose name is Lord Blackthorn, I pictured him a certain way in my head, so I wasn't like on board with how things were going. So that kind of like, I think, didn't help me, but also I just found it incredibly predictable, um, which isn't always a bad thing, but in this case, I was just like, I know exactly what is gonna happen in this book, like exactly what is gonna happen. So I just didn't find it very in compelling. That's a good word. <laughs> I didn't find it very compelling. Uh, I will still finish the series. I hope that Long Shadow is better, but this one was only a three star for me. The only four star book that I read this month was The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Rashi Chakshi. This was a really interesting book because I don't know how I feel about it still. Um, it feels like honestly forever ago that I read it because it was right at the beginning of the month. Uh, so basically this follows a girl who married, well, a young woman, I should say, who, who marries this guy and she basically tells him, don't ever ask me about my past. And then they go to live at her childhood home, I think, to live with her aunt who is dying and secrets start coming out. So I liked that aspect of it, the kind of like secrets, like, oh, what happened? Like what was in her past that she doesn't want anyone to know? Like what is the the answer to this kind of mystery. So I enjoyed that aspect of it. I don't know if I'm really like satisfied with what happened or how it ended or any of that, but it was fun to read. But like, I think that's the only thing I got out of it was that it was a fun time to read or listen to in my case. Um, but like, aside from that, I didn't, it's not gonna be like a reread for me or like a favorite or anything, but it was fun while well, it lasted. Okay, moving on to five star books. This one is the one that I said was plotless, but not pointless. <laughs> and that would be The Wolf of Orinyaru by K.S. Veloso, which is the first book in the Wolf Queen series. I think they changed the name of that series. Um, I actually never really knew what this book was about. All I had heard was that it's about this woman who's the queen and her husband has left and she's trying to find him, basically. Uh, which is accurate, but I don't, didn't really understood what that entailed until I started reading it. Um, so I'm not going to say any more about it because I thought that aspect of it was really fun, just like not knowing what's happening, what's like anything about it. I thought that was so fun. But yeah, it just I just thought it had so many twists and turns and it was just so like exciting, but there's not really like a plot that you're like working towards, I don't think. So that kind of why it feel, is kind of why it feels plotless to me, uh, which I really enjoyed. Even though there wasn't a huge uh, character focus, I wouldn't say, other than on the main character, I still really enjoyed it. The one thing that I found a little bit annoying, I guess, is that there were flashbacks, not like formal flashbacks, but definitely scenes that the character was recalling from her childhood that kind of explained her motivations and her husband's motivations and like, things she knew about him and I don't that those parts kind of broke the flow for me but I also think that they were important so I don't fault the book for that but I do think those parts were slower for me to read 
So I'm super glad I finally read this. Uh, I've been wanting to read it for a while and then I got the Broken Binding editions. So I'm really glad to have read it and enjoyed it because I have the other two books in this nice edition. I am going to be reading those eventually, but uh, I was talking to Fina from Fina Reads about this series and she said that it's not really uh, necessary to read them like back to back, uh, which is good with me because it always takes me forever to get to anything. Um, but I did see that books two and three did have like a summary of the story so far, which I really, really appreciate. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. The next five star book that I have is The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. This one I have been seeing around for a while because it's not a new book. Um, and I bought a bunch of translated books recently and this was one of them. And oh my god, I enjoyed this book so much. This is basically about an island where uh, every so often things get kind of like disappeared or wiped from the island. So people have to just like get rid of it. And basically all of their memories of that thing kind of go away. But there are certain people who don't unremember, forget, <laughs> unremember who don't forget those things that they're supposed to be forgetting. So there is the memory police who comes in and punishes them for that. This one is another one that really kind of felt plotless and like, you're like, what is this tension building towards? Which I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed like just the vibe of this book. It felt so like eerie and quiet at the same time. And just seeing this world as things continuously disappear, I thought was fascinating. Uh, there's a Spotify playlist that I'm going to link down below that I listened to while I was reading this book and it was just like the perfect mood. So if you like listen to that playlist and you're like, oh, I like that mood, read this book. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> I think it does lean a little bit towards literary fiction where it's kind of heavy on themes that you're supposed to be picking up, which usually is not my cup of tea, but I think occasionally done with something that's really interesting like this was, it works really well for me. And this book is a prime example of that. I thought it was, I thought it was so good. I don't know what it means necessarily, but I enjoyed the things that it had to say while I was reading it, but definitely one that I will think about for a while. Okay. The last one that I read was Spy Family Volume 10. It was my favorite <laughs> because of course it is. The beginning of this volume is a flashback for a certain character's story. Maybe you can tell who it is. Uh, and I really enjoyed that. I think that it has been a long time coming for us to see a little bit more of that backstory and what made that character who they are. So I really enjoyed that. Um, and actually also, I think that where this volume left off in terms of the mission, I think is really interesting and like could be progressing things a little bit. So I quite enjoyed this and I'm so ready for the next one. The worst part about reading manga is having to wait for the next one. Like obviously I know it takes forever to like draw all the art that you need to draw for that, but I wish they came out quicker. <laughs> but that is it. That is everything I read in October. I am fairly happy with what I read. I didn't get sick until after so I can't even blame not reading that much on being sick. <laughs> I think that was a well-balanced reading month honestly. Like I read some stuff on audio, some physically, some manga, some novels. Felt good. I'm happy with it. And there are definitely some books on there that I've been wanting to get to for a while and that like kind of feels good to have off my plate, at least for the ones that I DNF'd. Um, I have already DNF'd another book this month, so I'm sure you'll be hearing about a couple more that I DNF in November. Um, especially with like a TBR like mine, I have over 100 books that I haven't read yet. It just feels like if I'm not enjoying it, why do I have it? So I've gotten to that point and I'm happy with it because yeah, I just want to be more intentional with the things that I'm buying and reading. But yeah, this is coming out way later than I wanted it to, but that's life, I guess. <laughs> but let me know if you had any thoughts on what I read this month and what your favorite month, 
what your favorite month is, what your favorite book that you read this month is, or not even this month, last, last month, your favorite book from October. That's what I'm trying to say. I want to know what it was. But anyway, thank you for watching, even though I feel like I'm going, losing my mind. Um, and I will see you all next time. <laughs> Bye.